Hey guys, it is Patrick here and I wanted you to know before you dive right into this accounting information systems lesson that the accompanied worksheet is available for download if you head to my website at www.patricklymsa.com or I'll leave the link directly to that worksheet down in the description below. Click on that, download the worksheet and print it out and that way you can follow along the accounting information systems lecture that I'm about to teach. So it has all the notes that I'm going to be going over. All you need to do is write your notes and fill in those blanks. So make sure you do that. And here is your AIS lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are going to take a deeper look into the transaction cycles that I introduced to you in the last lesson. Now, for some of you, you might decide, you know what? I think I'm good with this and go ahead and skip on. That's totally fine. Um, for those of you that just want a deep understanding of how these... Uh, I should say deeper understanding of the transactions that occur within each business cycle, then this might be useful to you. So all we're gonna do really is walk you through the five different transaction cycles that I introduced to you in the last lesson, and then specifically what transactions or what activities go into each and every transaction cycle. So let's get started with a deeper look at the different transaction cycles. So remember that within each transaction cycle or business process, there are many activities that occur within the cycle in order to aid in the transformation of data into information as well as for an organization or a business process to be able to achieve its specific organizational goals. So let's take a look at our first one here. That's the revenue transaction cycle. Remember that the main goal of this transaction cycle is to give goods and or services in exchange for cash. So we have goods and services and then we have cash. That's going to be the basically the exchange here. Activities that occur within this inside this cycle include it taking a customer's order and entering it into an accounting information systems, reviewing customer's credit. Obviously, if we're going to extend credit, we should check their credit, whether or not it's actually checking their credit or if they've already have established credit with us, checking to see what their credit limit is, checking the inventory to make sure that we can actually sell the goods that they actually requested us to send them or buy from us. We may need to ship those goods to the customer, so we need to ship those goods. What That is an, a task or an activity with in the revenue transaction cycle. Obviously, if we've uh, if we sold the goods at, on account, we may need to bill them for the goods that they purchased from us or services that we rendered to them. We also need to collect a payment from the customer and decrease accounts receivable because we're no longer receiving it since the obligation has been paid by the customer. And then finally, we may need to handle returns and allowances that might occur from the customer. So these are all, this is a sample, I would I should say, of tasks that are associated with the revenue transaction cycle. So there could be other activities and tasks, but these are some of the main ones. Now let's look, in, look at the expenditure transaction cycle. Remember that the main goal of this transaction cycle is to give cash in order to acquire goods, such as inventory, raw materials, or services. So we've got cash, we're giving that up for some goods or raw materials. Activities that might occur within this transaction cycle include requests for goods or services um, that is submitted to the purchasing department. So, you know, in a big organization, the way that purchasing works is that each department sends a purchase order or sorry, a purchase requisition to the purchasing department. Then the purchasing department will convert that purchase requisition into a purchase order, which is basically like an order form and then send that PO to the vendor so that they can order that good. So that request needs to come from the department. The purchase order is remitted to the vendor for fulfillment. Goods are received and verified by the warehouse. So remember, all goods that are received within a larger organization is received by the warehouse. The warehouse will catalog that receipt as well as open up the package and count the quantity that was received and then put that on a receiving ticket that is used to pay the bill at the end of the month. Invoice is received for payment. So we'll receive an invoice for 
the expenditures that we incur, and then we'll have to make payment on that invoice. And then, uh, then we may need to approve a vendor invoice package for payment. So um, we're gonna learn this a little bit later, but basically what happens is we need uh, certain documents in order to issue a check. So we're gonna need the invoice, the PO, we're gonna probably need the shipping uh, document as well as the warehouse shipping uh, report. And we need all of those to make sure that we're appropriately sending a check to a vendor in which we've ordered goods and we've actually received those goods. That's called a vendor invoice package. So those are some of the tasks that might occur in the expenditure transaction cycle. Let's take a look now at the production or the uh, conversion transaction cycle. Remember that the main goal of this transaction cycle is to combine labor and raw materials as well as print, purchase or produce finished goods for sale. Sorry. Rewind. The main goal of this transaction cycle is to combine labor and raw materials and produce finished goods for sale. So we're transforming raw materials into finished goods. So again, it might look something like this where we've got labor and raw materials. Those are going to be combined to get us to our finished goods. Some tasks that are related to this cycle in includes requests for raw material uh, for production. So typically, you know, raw material is purchased, brought in, and stored. And then when the production line needs it, they're going to request it from whoever has custody of the raw material so they can bring it to the production line so that they can produce the product. Schedule labor product production. So if we need labor, that needs to be scheduled as part of the manufacturing process or production uh, transaction cycle. We do need to manufacture the process, a product so we just don't take the labor and raw materials in and then do nothing with it. We actually need to actually produce something. Um, prepare cost allocation for finished goods. So obviously we need to know how much we're going to allocate to each product from a cost perspective so that we're pricing them appropriately in the marketplace. In addition, that's going to help us from a costing perspective on figuring out how much is going to go from it, uh, finished goods inventory to cost of goods sold. The last activity that might occur in the production or transactions, uh, conversion transaction cycle is the transfer of cost to finished goods inventory. So We've got all of these tasks. Obviously, there could be more to this, especially uh, if we dig a little deeper on the production process an organization may have. All right, let's jump over to the HR and the payroll cycle. The main goal of this cycle is to exchange cash for labor within the company. So we've got cash and we're willing to exchange that for labor in the terms of people and people's time. Activities that occur within this cycle include recruiting, training, um, and sorry, recruiting, hiring, and training new employees. That's what the human resources department does. Now they don't do maybe necessarily direct training. They're gonna give them a little bit of training, um, but that's kind of where it all starts. Updating payroll records. So the HR department is typically uh, responsible for the payroll records. Calculate payroll taxes, uh, payroll taxes and benefits for employees. Typically, they're going to oversee that process. And then, like I've said in a prior lesson, typically they go to a payroll processor who will then process that payroll, calculate all the deductions, and then figure out what that reporting looks like. Uh, distribute uh, payroll checks. Uh, or direct deposit to employees um, as part of this cycle. So that is the human resources and payroll transaction cycle. All right, in the last cycle, we've got the financing transaction cycle. Remember that the main goal of this transaction cycle is to obtain cash and disperse cash for the whole entire organization. Um, so that's what they're doing here. Activities that occur within this transaction cycle include understanding the cash capital needs for the organization. So the organization obviously needs cash to be able to pay their bills. How are they going to obtain it and what their requirements are for that cash to be available to pay their bills. Obtain cash from external sources. So if internally they cannot um, generate enough cash, they may need to go to external sources to collect cash so that they can pay their bills. 
Um, so either through debt or investment options. Repayment of debt with excess cash. So obviously if you have debt, you gotta pay it back. That's one of the things that we might do here in the financing transaction cycle. And then payment of dividends to shareholders. So shareholders are not guaranteed at dividends, but if we have excess capital or cash that we want to distribute to our investors and we have net income or retained earnings, we're able to do that here in this financing transaction cycle. So that is a look at the five different transaction cycles or business process and a little bit deeper into the activities or the tasks that are associated to each one of those cycles. As you go on through this course, it's important to understand that, you know, we'll talk a lot about the different business cycles and what activities that are a part of it. And you should know, you know, stepping back a little bit and going, okay, what is involved in that entire process? We took a look at, you know, vast majority of them, but obviously there are some maybe little details that we haven't really discussed because we're trying to give you an overview. It's important to understand what's the, how do we get from point A to point B? B, C, D, and Z uh, when we're, let's say, paying an employee. What are all the steps that go into it from a high level, right? Or maybe granular level, I don't know. Uh, uh, what are all the actual steps that are involved in order to pay an employee rather than just, hey, we got your hours, now we're just gonna get you a check because there's more to that than what we normally see. So that's a look at a deeper level. Um, or a deeper look at the different transaction cycles and the different tasks that are associated with those cycles. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you're looking for the next lesson, make sure you hit up that lesson right over here. And if you are looking for the entire accounting information systems course, make sure you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com where I have the full AIS course available to you. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video.